And we are going to start with the big story tonight. Last month was the driest April in Portland's recorded history. The driest April we've, uh, I guess we've ever, we ever have known or at least written down. We had less than a half an inch of rain for the entire month. March was dry. February was drier than normal. I mean, let's talk about April a little bit more. Not only was it dry, but it was warm as well. The National Weather Service says a lot of the snowpack across the state is gone because of it. Let's take a look at the U.S. monitor, drought monitor for Oregon. All right, almost the entire state is in some form of drought or abnormally dry, as they call it. Tonight, though, we're going to zoom in on that area. That's that dark red section in the middle of the map, and it's the Klamath Basin, where it's the worst exceptional drought. Out there, there's, well, there's simply not enough water to go around, and there hasn't been for a long time. I mean, this is really like a microcosm of how climate change is going to play out uh, in the western United States to me. Um, you know, out here, it's all about water. The Klamath Basin. Stretching across southern Oregon and down into California, it used to be wetlands. But over the centuries, things changed. Things dried up, and they were developed into farmland. Our elders tell us that when the big uh, trees were logged off, that it fundamentally changed the moisture level in the forest floors. Uh, so that, you know, they would tell us in the hottest part of August, you could go in, dig down a little ways in the soil and find moisture. That's really not the case anymore. This year, with low snowpack and warm weather, there's simply not enough water in the upper Klamath Lake for everyone who needs it. The grain I'm planting here today, there's not enough water to irrigate it. I'm using uh, what little moisture we got from a rain and snowfall that happened Sunday. It's one of the first in, I don't know, three months since we've seen moisture here. We're planting into that, and we're hoping to get some grain up to help hold the soil. So I got here. Alex Schwartz is with Report for America. He's been covering the water crisis for the Herald and News in Klamath Falls. There wasn't enough snowpack uh, this winter to counteract the extreme moisture deficit in the soils that we had. As a result, the lake's the lowest it's been in, I think, 40 or 50 years at this point. The Klamath tribes have senior water rights to the lake. The courts ruled that they get first dibs on the water to sustain endangered fish. That was a central part of our ancestors' diets forever. And as the water's dried up, the marshlands have gone away. The locus is, is a fraction of what it once was. But try telling that to the farmers who think that they should be getting priority during drought. I've got people that are counting on me to make this happen. I've got a community, i got employees that are counting on me to make this happen. And um, we're gonna go as far as we can this year um, with as little as we have to make it survive. This war over water is boiling up, so to speak. A tractor convoy spanned 20 miles through Klamath Falls last spring and 2,000 crosses and American flags were planted in a field off of Highway 97. Members of the tribes say there have been some racist clashes and posts online. Basically saying that uh, we should have, when there was battle over water, we should have done the job better and basically killed them all. And now, People's Rights Oregon, the militia group founded by Ammon Bundy, who took over the Mauhir National Wildlife Refuge, says they'll get involved. We will stand with our farmers and ranchers to defend their lands and their private property rights. People say that, you know, in the next hundred years, we're not gonna fight wars over oil or gold anymore. We're gonna fight wars over water. Now, lawmakers on both the state and federal level are paying attention to this, to these water issues here in our state. Oregon Senators Wyden and Merkley, they are working on a bill right now that would provide $250 million for tribal water infrastructure projects throughout the state. Governor Brown says she's working with Congress for drought relief for everyone in the basin. And the Biden administration has formed a working group to partner with local and tribal leadership throughout the western states to try to respond the climate change and the drought we're seeing as a, as, a, as a response to that. The thing is, this isn't a problem that just happened overnight, okay? We have been dealing with drought like this, growing in this way for a while. Here's what OSU professor Larry O'Neill told me. So actually, uh, the decade between 2010 and 2020, so the last 10 years, we've, um, we've been in droughts, you know, at least some form of drought within Oregon in uh, most of those years. 
And, um, you know, currently it's, it's unclear, um, when, you know, the current kind of drought cycle will, uh, break, even though we've gone through periods of drought and things like that, the worry is that into the future, um, you know, the water supply will become more strained and those sort of decisions will become harder, especially as the population grows and, um, you know, we become, uh, you know, it's, we become more sensitive to these um, disruptions. All right, let's talk to Chief Meteorologist Matt Zafino right now. He is an expert on these types of topics. So, Matt, we know we just talked about everything that's happening with drought in southern Oregon. What do we know about the rest of the state? The rest of the state is doing better, Dan, than southern Oregon. And this was not completely unexpected going through a La Nina year like this. We tend to do well from about central Oregon northward, and we tend to not do well with wintertime snowfall from central Oregon southward. And that's kind of how this winter played out. Now, if you look at our snowpack basin by basin, where you see red, that's not good news. But green is pretty good. That's the Hood River and Sandy lower to shoots. That's 108% of average. And this is for as of today. So that's a good water supply. The Willamette Basin, which is broad, 66% doesn't sound great, but on Mount Hood, we're doing better. I'll show you that in a minute. Northeast Oregon is also doing okay as well. So the snowpack, isn't as bad as it's been in some other years. And when you look at this line, the orange is the line. That's our actual snowpack through the course of this year. The blue is average. So whenever the yellow line is above the blue line, that means we have more snowpack than average. When it's below, we have less. And you can see from about the middle of February onward, we've been above average. This is for Mount Hood all the way, even until May 1st, we're right at about average. So yes, we saw the lower elevation snowpack melt off sooner because it's been such a dry spring. We didn't add to it all really very much at all. Um, and that is a concern. As far as Portland goes, most of our water supply comes from rainfall in the Bull Run watershed. There is some contribution to melting snow, but much of it is rainfall. And as of right now, shortage is not expected. So what does that mean? Does that mean you can just, you know, wash your car every day and water your lawn willy nilly? No, we should all be conservative with our water use because as we just saw from that big story, Dan, in the Klamath Basin, water is an extremely and more and more so precious resource throughout the West, even here in the wet part of the state west of the Cascade. So be conservative with your water use. Use it when you need it. Just don't waste it. I think that's the main message going forward for us here in Portland. I'm wondering about your opinion on something, because when I was in California living there for a few years, water conservation was a mandatory part of regular life, whether it's uh, assigned times to water your lawn or at times how many loads of laundry you should be doing or how long your showers should be or how many times you should flush the toilet things things like that is that where we're headed do you think or, or, or should we be headed in that direction well you know we have a better water supply than california does simply because we live in a wetter climate i can tell you that those conservation measures in california did a lot. I mean, their water usage dropped and they, the amount of water they saved in a huge state, as you know, was really incredible. So it works. Now you can debate whether or not you're infringing on personal liberties by telling people how many loads of laundry they can wash per week. But in a state that is a dry state, California is a very arid state. Um, you know, they need to take measures, uh, extreme measures sometimes. I saw a story today about the water supply in the uh, Colorado River held back by Lake Mead, and that's at its lowest levels ever. Mm -hmm. So water supply is gonna become an increasingly big issue throughout the West as our climate continues to change. In fact, one graphic I didn't get to show you, but I, I actually was working on, was when you look at the, the runoff uh, in the spring, it has been happening earlier since 1958 and, and even later than that. But especially in most years, we're seeing an earlier runoff then we are seeing a later runoff. So this is likely going to be something that is gonna become more of an issue we need to address, not less. Got it. Thanks for the context, Matt. You As bet. always, appreciate it.